Now, if you are a nonprofit leader, then you know what donor restricted funds are, or at least you should, right? Now, it's very important that your accounting system has identified these funds and that they are being tracked so that at any point you can tell where your restricted funds lie. It's also very important that your accounting team is aware of those restrictions and what the parameters are around those restrictions so that they can make sure that you are in compliance and raise any flags if things tend to fall out of bounds or if there are things that you need to be aware of, if there are reports due, things of that nature. So if you're using QuickBooks Online and you're wondering how do you even track these in your accounting system, then you wanna stay tuned for today's video. Now this video might seem, feel, or be a little bit tactical because I do want to talk through how you actually use QuickBooks Online to track these funds. But first things first is that whenever your organization receives money in, it is important to understand, are these funds restricted or not? That's the very first step because the next step is going to be to determine how it is that you need to book said transaction in the accounting system, but you can't do that if you don't know if the funds are restricted or not, right? Typically, if the funding source is like a grant or a government contract, it will come with an agreement, um, some sort of a document that will state the parameters around said funds, if there are any restrictions. And then if there are, they will very clearly outline what those restrictions are. Now you need to have a process internally for how those documents are circulated to the appropriate parties and also how those individual funds are tracked, right? And I'm not just talking about in the accounting system. So we too also have like a spreadsheet that we keep it. We call it like a funding uh, inventory tool of sorts that kind of outlines all of the grants that the client is managing and all of the details that surround that grant. We also actually request the agreement so that we can read it over ourselves because sometimes you might read it over, you might not be familiar with the language and you might not be able to tell whether there's restrictions or not, but that's our job. This is what we do. So we actually do retain those because it also helps us to fill out our funding inventory tool so we can internally track like, oh, are there quarterly reports? You know, are there certain invoices that we have to submit to get our money back and things like that. And so we don't want that to be your job per se. So we ask that you get the agreement, that you turn it over to us, and then we do the tracking from there. So now that we got that out of the way, QuickBooks has many features, right? And if you talk to different uh, executive directors or just even other like nonprofit accountants, like we all don't use the tool the same. And so it is important before you start dipping and dabbing into features that you understand what you need to track specifically for your organization so that you can remain consistent. So it's like you use accounts for this, you use classes for this, you use tags for this. Like you wanna be very clear and very specific because you want to be consistent. The other reason that it's important that you want to be consistent is because you don't want to mess up your file. Like I have seen some files that have come across our desk that have required quite a bit of cleanup because there's just been no consistency, how things have been tracked or things have been front loaded in the chart of accounts. And like, you don't want to do that. So I'm going to actually be talking through two ways that you can track restricted funds in QuickBooks Online and that's using locations. And then that's also using projects. So first up is locations. Um, so let's dive in. So the first step when using locations is to one, make sure that it's turned on. So you of course want to check your QuickBooks Online settings to make sure that you actually have it on so that you can use it. Once you know you've done that, the first step is you're going to create two locations. One is going to be with donor restrictions. The other is going to be without donor restrictions. Then you want to go to your chart of accounts. You want to add an income account that is labeled net assets release from restriction. This is going to be important because while you are tagging the funding that comes in, as you start to spend it, we actually have to reduce right? That amount that's sitting in restriction. So that's where this is going to come in. And I just realized that there is a misspelling here. So let's fix that. You're going to create an other income account that is into slash out of restricted net assets. And then you're going to get an equity account, label it with donor restrictions. And then you're going to create two sub accounts, which are going to be labeled beginning and year to date change, right? Now, it's important that you create all of these accounts um, because we're going to talk through like, so how do you actually even use these, right? So when 
transactions are hitting your account and you're going through and you're doing your bookkeeping, you want to make sure that every transaction actually has a location, right? Expenses will always have the location without donor restrictions because you can't restrict expenses. You restrict the income and then based off of how the income is restricted, that determines how you spend, if that makes sense, right? Expenses will always have that without donor restriction location. Now, income, however, will be tagged dependent on if there are restrictions or not. So if you receive a $10,000 grant and it has a restriction, the location is going to be with donor restriction. If it does not have a location, it'll be without. Very straightforward. The last part is that you want to make sure that all income and expense transactions have a donor or customer. Um, and I say or customer because sometimes depending on what um, QuickBooks, which one you have, it will determine how things are labeled. So it could be labeled customer, it could be labeled donor, same thing, right? But you want to make sure that all income and expense transactions actually have a donor assigned to them because that helps us when we want to run reports and see what's sitting in, you know, restrictions or if we want to see it by donor, things of that nature. So you always want to be clear on that. And then the final step, right, is like, how do we release these funds from restrictions? Well, one, you have to make sure that when you're spending down, right, that you don't forget to release these funds from restrictions so that your reporting remains accurate. And to do that, we actually use a journal entry which I'm gonna show you now. Okay, so here is your journal entry. So you're going to debit your net assets release from restrictions, but using the with donor restrictions location, you're gonna credit that same account, but the location is going to be without donor restrictions. Now this is because we're moving funds from restriction to without, because now they're being spent. But in order for them to be spent, we now need to remove that restriction, right? And then the next entry where you're um, going to debit year to day change and credit into slash out of restricted net assets, both of those are going to be tagged with donor restrictions because we want to show the change of those funds, right? And then lastly, we have to show the change in restricted cash, right? And so you're going to debit that checking account, that, um, put the location without donor restrictions, and then you're going to credit same checking, but with donor restrictions, right? Now, as you are... After you prepare this entry, your books need to now show a reduction in the net assets released from restrictions as assigned to the with donor restriction um, location, and then an increase on the without. And let me just show you an example. So if we're assuming that $3,190.38 got moved, right? That's the amount that we're spending down. You see here, it's the net assets released from restriction, but we're reducing the with donor restriction amount and increasing the with donor restriction, the without donor restriction amount, because now we can spend it. And then we even drill down here and see what those funds were spent on. And the, the thought is, right, that this is what those funds were geared for. And so now if you had to run a report and show what it was spent on, you could show them this. So that concludes the location piece. And now I'm going to talk briefly about how you can use projects to track uh, restricted funds in QuickBooks Online. So next is another way to track restrictions. Now we talked about how sometimes you might get grants that have restrictions and all types of reporting requirements that come with those. Sometimes there are milestones, right? So you might receive a million dollar grant, but you only get it right in three stages or something like that when you hit certain milestones. So another way to track that is using projects. So with projects, you can assign income and expenses to these individual projects, i.e. these restricted grants. And what I like about using this is that QuickBooks has been getting very innovative with the projects feature. There's a dashboard, there's certain reporting. And so you can really drill down and see certain things, right, as it relates to these individual restricted grants that you may not be able to see otherwise. So when using projects, again, very straightforward, you want to make sure that you go to your settings, you want to go to the project, you want to list them, name them, right? Make sure that you are very clear and specific because as transactions come in, you want to then assign whatever income, whatever grant, whatever funding that was to that individual project. And then all of the expenses that then get spent that are supposed to be assigned to that restricted grant, it needs to be tagged or assigned to that specific project. So let's assume that we have project one, two, three. We've set it up in the settings. When we go to projects, we see project one, two, three you get $10,000 in that is restricted, you are going to assign that restricted income to project 
one, two, three. Now let's say you spend $5,000 of that on, I don't know, staffing, right? You're going to assign that salary cost to project one, two, three. Now when you run the dashboard or when you run the report in QuickBooks Online, you will actually be able to see that hey, we received $10,000 for project one, two, three. We spent five of it on staffing. There is five left. This is good because you'll be able to quickly tell like where your restricted funds lie. You'll be able to report to your funder to show how that's been spent. And also you'll be able to see and track so you know, hey, we only have $5,000 left. So we have to be very careful how we spend that and we have to make sure that it's spent on what they said, right? And so very straightforward, not too crazy, um, but also just another way to track those restrictive funds. Now, I hope this video was helpful. I'm sorry if you heard some banging in the back. They're doing some construction, um, but I wanted to get this out to you guys. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments of this video. And if you know that, you know, your organization is growing, you are past that DIY standpoint and you know that you want to just hand this off to somebody, then I invite you to join our wait list because we will be accepting clients um, soon. We'll be opening up our client roster and we'd love to see if a partnership would be beneficial to the both of us and I will see you guys in the next video.